Wars are fought and won with brains for tactics and the blood of the common man. Humans throughout history have been at war with each other for nearly our whole existence, with untold horrors and destruction left in its wake. But some wars lack this, or casualties period due to fighting. These conflicts are referred to as bloodless wars, and today we will be looking into detail about some of these conflicts. The first one that we will look at is the Aroostook War, which was between the US and the UK in 1838. The conflict between the two arose from a border dispute between the states of Maine and the Canadian province of New Brunswick. The issue stemmed from the Treaty of Paris in 1783 that ended the American Revolutionary War. The treaty did not clearly determine the boundary between British North America and the United States. So the Commonwealth of Massachusetts began issuing land grants in present-day Maine, which it owned at the time. The War of 1812 saw the British occupy most of eastern Maine, as they intended to annex the areas of occupation to some degree. The Treaty of Ghent that followed reaffirmed the boundary line as of the 1783 treaty, and while a commission determined who owned the islands in Pascamaquiddy Bay, it didn't define the land boundary which again was in question between the two. When Maine was separated into its own state in 1820, the boundary question was a massive concern for the new state, and it was also still a concern for Massachusetts, who owned upwards of half of all of the public land in Maine, including large sections of the disputed territory. The British saw the extension of territory so hindering between the inland and coastal regions that it made communication and travel much more difficult. If they had control over the northern half of the claimed land, it would cut travel time between Quebec and Halifax in nearly half. The region was also a major source of lumber, which was vital to both Maine and New Brunswick's economy. Losing the region would pretty much cripple the economy of either province. This proved to be a greater incentive to the British when thousands of acres of New Brunswick were destroyed in the Great Mariachi Fire of 1825. A series of arrests and mild skirmishes eventually led to Maine's governor claiming that the British were invading, raising $800,000 to raise the militia and establish fortifications, with the federal government passing a bill that allowed the president to spend $10 million to raise the army if fighting erupted. Maine militia occupied points all along the Aroostook Territory, raising upwards of 11,000 men. Neither nation wanted a war that would have greatly interfered with the two nations' trade, and the compromise was finally reached in the Webster-Ashburton Treaty in 1842. This treaty settled land disputes along the Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, and New Hampshire border with British North America. The British retained the northern area of the disputed territory in Maine, which included the Halifax Road, which was the key to year-round overland communications between Quebec and Nova Scotia. The U.S. government agreed to pay the states of Maine and Massachusetts $150,000 each for the loss of the lands and for the expense in keeping the Maine militia raised for two years. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this conflict, I have a slightly more in-depth video on this already uploaded on the channel. Link here. Continuing with conflict between these two was the Pig War of 1857, again arising from a border dispute between British North America and the United States. The Oregon Treaty of 1846 set the border between Oregon County and British Columbia. The treaty also set the boundary between Vancouver Island and what is now Washington State, stating that it would be split in the middle strait between Vancouver Island and the mainland. The dispute arose as two different straits could be determined as the middle, which had the San Juan Islands as the land in dispute. A commission was set to fix the dispute, but neither side agreed and the dispute over the islands continued. Because of this ambiguity, both the United States and Britain claimed sovereignty over the San Juan Islands. During this period of dispute, Britain's Hudson Bay Company established operations on San Juan and turned the island into a sheep ranch. Meanwhile, by mid-1859, around 25 American settlers had arrived. San Juan held significance not for its size, but as a military strategic point. While the British held Fort Victoria and Vancouver Island to the west, the nation that held the San Juan Islands would be able to dominate all the straits connecting the Strait of Juan de Fuca with the Strait of Georgia. The dispute came to the head when a pig was shot and killed by an American settler as he was eating the potatoes. The owner of the pig came to demand a heavy sum for the pig, and the argument between the two reached the point where British authorities threatened to arrest the American, who in turn called for protection from local U.S. units. A few dozen men under George Edward Pickett landed on San Juan Island, with the goal of preventing the British from landing. The British saw this as a potential attempt to take over the islands by occupation, and dispatched a number of warships to the area. 
Within the following month, over 400 Americans supplemented with 15 cannons were opposed by 5 warships and 2,100 British. The governor of Vancouver Island, James Douglas, ordered the ranking admiral to remove the Americans, but he refused, saying that a war over a pig was absolutely foolish, and he was right. The two governments eventually agreed to a joint occupation of the islands until the matter could be settled. Arbitration by German King Wilhelm I in 1871 eventually gave the islands to the Americans, ending the last major land dispute between these two nations. Operation Restore Democracy was launched on January the 19th of 2017. It pitted forces loyal of Gambian President Yaha Yaman against a coalition of forces from the Ikenob community of West African states, after Yaman refused to step down following his defeat in the 2016 presidential election to Adama Barrow. The coalition gave an ultimatum to Yahim to step down in which he refused, and thus on January the 19th, 7,000 men, nearly all Singalese, invaded the Gambia. Small skirmishes took place along the border region, but no casualties on either side were reported. Within a few hours, the Sangalese halted their advance and once again f called for Yahan to step down, which he again refused. Shortly before the invasion continued, Gambia's army chief general Osama Baji pledged loyalty to Adama Baro and refused to fight the coalition forces. 45,000 people fled into Senegal following this invasion, and another 1,000 to guinea bissau and a few thousand troops stayed within Gambia for stability reasons, some of which were still based one year later. While the original invasion didn't cause casualties, two deaths and a few dozen wounded have occurred from clashes with the troops so far.